Hello and welcome to 10 Minute Tabletop News. I'm Devin. And I'm Darren. And here are the three biggest stories in tabletop from the past week in 10 minutes or less. First up, let's talk about Fablecraft. So this is super exciting, actually. Yeah. They are combining a tabletop RPG system and yep. a virtual tabletop all in one thing. Exactly. Most virtual tabletops, which are things like Roll20 and Foundry, are designed to play many games. Yeah. But this is a proprietary VTT for a for a, a specific tabletop RPG yeah. system. And you'll only be able to play Fablecraft on this software. Yeah, but the idea of that is there are so many VTTs that can try to that try to please everyone by making everything available, but you can't It's interesting to build from the ground up that we're going to build a virtual tabletop for our game and our game only rather than trying to think about everything you could build that would yeah. suit every game. Yeah, and I think that'll probably make for a cleaner game experience. Like I think when you're trying to accommodate all these different games and all these different systems, that's where things can maybe get clunky and confusing. And like we talked about in our 10 minute tabletop last week, like a lot of those VTTs, you have to learn by someone showing you and yep. walking you through it. And this seems like it's going to be a software and system specifically meant to be like, we don't need to teach you much. Just yeah. follow the instructions. Go exactly. from step one to step two. Because when you're using a VTT that's meant for many game systems, you have to learn how it works for every game system, right. how it works to actually create things with it. And I do think this virtual first where we're like, hey, instead of thinking, how can we bring a tabletop game virtual? How can we build an excellent virtual tabletop game. Yeah, and it's going to have like a whole bunch of really cool stuff. It's going to have character creation. It's going to have pre-made adventures, mm -hmm. music, artwork, interactive battle maps. Like yeah. it's going to be decked out for like all the customization and the fun stuff that can make it feel like like a little video game. Yeah, and I, I did talk to the founder of Fablecraft at oh. GDC. What they're working on is really exciting. We had some talks. I can't wait for the more that they have to announce. Yeah. But I think this is very interesting because it's the first of its kind. Yeah, and I think we talk about this every single week on this yeah. show, but we're always talking about like lowering that barrier to entry to tabletop right. RPG, and then this now, is another thing. There are a handful of VTTs that have also made a proprietary game that is solely for their virtual tabletop. Roll20 did it with Burnbright, and Roll did it with Chrome. Uh, but this is still different because the virtual tabletop doesn't work with anything else other than the game it's designed for. Yeah, and if it's going to be optimized for that game, I think they're going to be able to get the best user experience to fine-tune it to that game. Next up, let's talk about Critical Role. Another big announcement. Moves. Yes, another huge announcement from Darrington Press. They're going to release their Candela Obscura campaign. Well, yeah, that, that'll be Critical Role. That's their new show. Yes. Yeah. The, the Candela Obscura campaign on their Illuminated World system, yeah. which is their very own proprietary yep. tabletop RPG system. So we talked about this before, but Critical Role is releasing, they have two, maybe three tabletop RPGs in the works. One of them is Daggerheart, which everyone's talking about, is this the D&D &D killer? Mm -hmm. That It's way too early to speculate on that, but the fact that Critical Role, one of the largest streams that primarily plays Dungeons & Dragons, is creating a high fantasy tabletop RPG, it's a, it's a fair thing to maybe guess at. But Illuminated Worlds is their setting list system, D6. When you were reading it, you had a great example. It's like, well, what are the two games you were saying it feels like? Yeah, I was saying it was giving me a very major Monster of the Week vibes because yeah. it was talking about how it was going to be like an inciting incident. Yeah, the, the game starts with an inciting incident that kind of kicks it off. The gathering information, which yeah. is very Monster of the Week. So in Monster of the Week, you get an inciting incident, you gather information, you investigate it. And then it was also saying that it was going to be like anthological where like it would be uh, yeah. individualized... Like the an anthology series. <laughs> yes. So exactly. every story is kind of self-contained. If you watch them, you can maybe get a larger story. But it, but the idea that you can just come to it without having to watch anything previously is great. Yeah. It also it. has a little bit of Call of Cthulhu vibes with the occultism. Yes. Yeah, it's gothic horror, yeah. I think is what they called it. But the reason this is important is we are going to see how well Critical Role running their own system that they have put out under their publishing house, Darrington Press, will perform with them creating a show around it. Taz um, crushed it with Monster of the Week. Yes. That made Monster of the Week, they had to go through eight reprints of Monster of the Week when the Adventure Zone featured it in their podcast. Wow. So can Critical Role do that for their own system? And will this skyrocket? Can they translate their show into sales of a game system? 
We'll see. I mean, you said a lot. Of, I mean, you made a comment before about how there is a huge section of viewers that don't even play any tabletop yeah. RPG whatsoever. But I do think that they have the force to push this forward. I mean, they're one of the biggest shows ever. And then, like, a lot of people, me included, learn how to play exactly. by watching Critical Role. And if, if they're going to have a, like, a simple settingless system, this is really anything that any something that anyone can put their imprint yeah. on and imagine whatever world they want to do within it. And the fact that they are building these systems knowing that they want to be able to onboard and make it easy for people to come learn the system and play the system gives them a huge advantage. Yeah, because they have they're not working with all of the all of the baggage that D&D &D and some other large mm. game systems have to not only create lore but new mechanics. Mm. When you create one game, you've created it and then you can move forward and essentially approach it with a very first time experience in mind. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. They're going to be like their own brand ambassadors, kind of like building this game from the ground up. I mean, exactly. they're coming out with a quick start guide on Thursday, May 25th, and they're also going to be coming out with a video, like a how to play video. Yep. So yeah. And you nice. know, when you're a media house and a publisher, the two feed into each other. So I'm excited to see how this plays out mm -hmm. and what this means for the future of Darrington Press. Me as well. And last but not least, I love this story. I remember a few a few months ago, I saw Free League pop up on the Macy's website. I found a game, Into the Odd, mm -hmm. uh, really fun kind of OSR style game. But I was trying to buy it, and it was being sold on the Macy's website, <laughs> which I thought was funny that this like OSR kind of like tabletop RPG was being sold on the Macy's website. But then this week. I found Morkborg and a number of other Free League games being sold on tractorsupply.com. I mean, you're talking about critical role making move. Free League is making moves. If we're talking <laughs> about, they're getting into department stores. When I when I first saw Tractor Supply, I'm like, is this just Home Depot online? But it actually does look like it's its very own online department store as well. Yeah. But like these department stores, which have like dedicated aisles, department sections, also have very extensive games, toys, game sections, yeah. and they're now including tabletop RPG and Free League. I don't know who their salesperson is, yeah, but I don't they know got in there. Their <laughs> omni-channel like, wholesale in, in sales. But Free League, this feels like a great move for them, and I'm yeah. very curious to see where we're going to start seeing tabletop RPGs also show up. Mm -hmm. Avatar, The Last Airbender, the starter sets at Target, mm -hmm. that is essentially punching into a very different marketplace than where people normally buy games, you know, hobby stores. So the fact that it's being sold at Tractor Supply, we see starter sets at Target, Walmart is selling starter sets, Macy's now has tabletop RPGs. This is going to expose to a different market, hopefully, and grow that the user base. I mean, it's a good sign too, in order to get in a department store like this, they're gonna sell things that consumers are buying and that consumers are actually hungry for. So yeah. Free League obviously made a case that they're like, yo, tabletop <laughs> RPGs are the games to be right now. So right? if you're gonna build out your game section, you can't have tabletop RPGs not included in that. So exactly. And, awesome. and so it's funny, I did I did call tractorsupply.com. <laughs> I tried to get a hold of someone in their merchandising and marketing team. I wasn't able to. I got a very nice email. I had a, a very nice conversation with their support team, but I wasn't able to get like, hey, how did this come about? I would love to know. So if you are listening and you work for tractorsupply.com or you know someone, let us know. Make your intentions known. <laughs> um, so, But again, this is important because we're seeing tabletop RPGs push further out from just hobby stores and seeing them show up in the mainstream. Merchandising game on lock. <laughs> <laughs> and those are our three stories for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, if you want to support the show, head over to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Total Party Chill. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Bye!